Have you ever wondered how an ancient civilization can carve an entire city out of nothing but rock? Or how a place so remote could become a bustling hub of trade and culture? Welcome to Petra, the rose city of the desert where these questions find their answers. Alrighty, got a local guy to tie my head. The, uh, the Jordanian style. I uh, use the Jordan Pass. I got my ticket and we're off into the mountains. Welcome to the Sikh, a mesmerizing passage that serves as a gateway to the ancient city of Petra. Carved by the elements over thousands of years, the Sikh stretches for over a kilometer, with cliffs rising as high as 200 meters on either side. As you journey deeper into the canyon, you'll be greeted by a kaleidoscope of colors and textures, rippling patterns etched into the sandstone. At its narrowest point, the Sikh measures just a few meters wide, creating a sense of intimacy and wonder as you pass through this natural marvel. But perhaps the most magical moment comes when you catch your first glimpse of the treasury, the iconic monument that awaits at the end of the Sikh, shrouded in mystery and awe. The top lookout spot of the treasury, maintained by the local Bedouins, access came with a hefty price. Seven, five. Determined to negotiate, I found myself face to face with the challenge, but unexpectedly, I wasn't alone. As I haggled with the Bedouins, another solo traveler, Ihtisham from Pakistan, was negotiating his way to the top as well. Seeing an opportunity, we decided to team up. Pooling our bargaining skills, we managed to convince the Bedouins to lower the price significantly. With a nod of approval, they allowed us access to the top lookout spot, and in that moment, a friendship was born. Ihtisham and I continued our journey together through Petra and the rest of Jordan. Shukran, Habibi. After years of hustling these guides, they said go. So I'm going. Oh. The Sikh opens up to Petra's most magnificent facade, the treasury, or in Arabic, Al-Khazna. Its elaborate facade standing over 40 meters tall is adorned with sculptures and symbols. Crowned by a funerary urn, local legend whispers of a pharaoh's treasure concealed within. If you look closely, you can see bullet holes in the urn. In the past, local Bedouin people would shoot at it in hope that its treasures would pour out. Despite its grandeur, the purpose of the treasury remains shrouded in mystery. Some archaeologists Archaeologists speculate it was a temple, while others suggest it may have been used to store documents. Recent excavations, however, have revealed a graveyard beneath its foundation. Nonetheless, a marvel of ancient architecture that continues to inspire wonder and fascination. That's a donkey. Wow. Wow, look at this place. A historic and archaeological marvel in southern Jordan, Petra is known for its awe-inspiring rock-cut architecture and intricate water conduit system. A city literally carved from the sandstone cliffs that earns its nickname, the Rose City, from the color it glistens. The history of Petra dates back to as early as 7000 BC with evidence of farmers settling in the region, but it was the Nabataean nomadic Arabs who truly put Petra on the map in the 4th century BC. These enterprising traders transformed this remote desert outpost into a bustling metropolis, leveraging its strategic location to establish it as a major trading hub. By the 1st century AD, Petra had reached its zenith, posting a population of around 20,000. However, as is the way of all empires, decline was inevitable. In 106 AD, Petra fell to the Romans. As sea trade routes emerged, the city's importance dwindled, and its once driving markets and streets fell silent. Yet Petra was not forgotten. In 1812, a Swiss traveler and convert to Islam, Johann Burckhardt, heard locals speaking of a lost city hidden in the mountains who rediscovered the lost city, bringing its beauty and history to the world's attention. Petra's significance was globally recognized in 1985 when it was declared a UNESCO World Heritage Site and in 2007 it was voted as one of the new seven wonders of the world. Today Petra stands as a symbol of Jordan, a popular tourist attraction drawing over 1 million visitors annually. 
From its early days as a humble farming settlement to its golden age as the capital of the Nabataean kingdom and its eventual decline under the Roman rule, Petra is a testament to the airport and flow of civilizations. In conclusion, Petra's history is a rich tapestry of culture, trade, and architectural innovation covered by the sands of time. Nestled within the ancient city of Petra lies the Great Temple and represents one of the major archaeological and architectural monuments of central Petra with an original height of 18 meters. The style and quality of the temple, elaborate floral friezes and limestone indicate that the temple was built later on in history. In the heart of the Hejaz region of modern-day Saudi Arabia, a powerful civilization once thrived, the nation of Thamud. Stretching from Hejaz to Syria, this was the land where the story unfolded of Prophet Saleh The same people who built the rock-formed homes in the mountains of Hejaz were responsible for the magnificent city of Petra. A testament to their sophistication and pride in architectural abilities, they were a powerful nation with a well-developed civilization. However, they became ungrateful in the favor sent upon them and began to worship their own creations. This worldly success led to a spiritual bankruptcy. Alright, we made it halfway, now we're off to the monastery. I mean, they were saying 900 steps, but I thought it was like steps. But it's actually like staircase. Prophet Saleh, a descendant of Prophet Nuh السلام, was among the people of Thamud, a man known for his compassion, purity, and wisdom. But when he began preaching monotheism and the worship of Allah alone, doubt and opposition arose. In an attempt to prove his prophethood, Prophet Saleh was mockingly challenged to produce a giant pregnant camel from the rock. From the creator of the heavens and universe, the miracle was granted and the camel was presented to the people of Thamud as evidence to the message of Prophet Saleh. The camel was indeed a living miracle and every day people would accept the truth. However, the majority remained in ignorance and even began to plot. Prophet Saleh warned the people to let the camel graze freely and to not harm her or else a grave punishment will be sent. Up in the mountains, they got everything. We're coming in 10 minutes more. Thank you brother, thank you. The leaders of Thamud, blinded by pride and ignorance, shamelessly killed a miraculous camel, the very same blessing they asked for. Not only that, but they began to taunt and mock Prophet Saleh, hastening for the punishment. They were given three days to repent for their mistakes. Instead, they celebrated and plotted against the Prophet himself. Saleh and his followers were instructed to leave, and on the third day, disaster struck. The people of Thamud believed that their fortified homes in the mountains could protect them from any punishment sent to them, but that may have been the exact medium to which the punishment was sent through. They were shaken with an overwhelming earthquake and a sonic boom. In their arrogance, the people of Thamud believed themselves invincible, but their pride and ungratefulness led to their downfall, and just like that, they fell lifeless in their homes, a sobering reminder of the consequences of spiritual bankruptcy and disobedience. <laughs> Amen. 
من خزي يومئذ إن ربك هو القوي العزيز وأخذ الذين ظلموا الصيحة فأصبحوا في ديارهم جاثمين كأن لم يغنوا فيها ألا إن ثمود كفروا ربهم ألا بعدا لثمود High above the ancient city, nestled deep within the rugged cliffs of Petra, stands the monastery, a significant architectural marvel that beckons travelers from far and wide. Known in Arabic as Adir, the monastery boasts a facade measuring over 55 meters wide and 50 meters high. Adorned with elaborate carvings and sculptures, it depicts mythological figures and religious motives, a testament to the skilled craftsmanship of its creators. Although the monastery is located about 6 kilometers from Petra's main entrance and includes about 800 steps up into the hills, it is most definitely a worthwhile experience. But it's not just the monastery itself that captivates, it's the panoramic views of Petra's rocky terrain stretching out before you, a testament to the breathtaking landscape of Jordan. The Quranic reference to the punishment of Thamud presents a fascinating topic of discussion. In one chapter, an earthquake is mentioned, while in another, a sonic boom is described. Researchers around the world have uncovered intriguing connections between seismic events and sonic booms. They've discovered that energy released from earthquakes can transmit through rock, projecting into the atmosphere, and creating deafening sonic booms. This phenomenon holds particular significance in mountainous and rocky regions. Areas like Petra and Madan Saleh that have documented evidence of such seismic activity throughout history. Take a listen to the sounds detected from the Japan earthquakes in 2011. Could these sonic booms produced by seismic events have played a role in the destruction of the people of Thamud during the time of Prophet Saleh? Wallahu a'lam. How do we unravel the interconnected threads of history linking Prophet Saleh, the people of Thamud, the Nabataeans, the rock carved homes of Petra and Madain Saleh? Let's explore some intriguing theories. One theory suggests that the people of Thamud, as mentioned in the Quran, are from a much older civilization, and the Nabataeans, known for their mastery of Petra's rock cut architecture, may have inherited or built upon pre existing rock carved homes in the region. Could these ancient structures have originated from a lost empire? Another hypothesis hypothesis suggests a connection between the people of Thamud and the Nabataeans, proposing that they were a subgroup of the Nabataeans located in Hejaz. Are these sites of Petra and Madain Saleh much older than we anticipate? Is there a connection between Naqatullah, the camel that was sent as a sign to Thamud, and the giant camel carvings recently discovered in that area of Saudi Arabia? It's almost impossible to put a historical timeline to the prophets, as there are no indications in the Quran. Nevertheless, they say history is written by the victors. As science and history evolve, we are reminded to prioritize our belief in the Quran as this is our history. For in the end, it is humility and faith that endure through the ages. As I arrived in Petra the day before, the sky was painted in hues of orange and blue, casting a magical light over the ancient city. Inside a coin coffee shop, I met Ahmed, a proud Jordanian born and raised in modern Petra. We struck up a conversation and he kindly offered to show me around the city. Learning that I had driven down the King's Highway with only the radio for company, Ahmed insisted on buying me an FM transmitter. As night fell, Ahmed led me to a secluded lookout spot, offering a rare glimpse of Petra illuminated against the evening sky, a sight few visitors ever get to witness. Later we shared dinner together and despite my protests, Ahmed insisted on covering the cost. He even arranged for me to stay at a nearby hotel owned by a friend, securing me a generous discount. To my friend Ahmed, for your hospitality and generosity during our brief time together, I am truly grateful and I hope our paths cross again someday. As I bid farewell to Petra, I carry with me memories of friendship and connection, reminding me that in every corner of the globe there are friends waiting to be made. Редактор